All right, y'all, I don't want to make this video too negative, but I do want to point out some of the things about Next.js that have been kind of bothering me when I'm using the app router with server actions. And I do want to say that I do like using Next.js, which is why I use it in most of my videos. I do think it's still one of the best ways to build out a full stack application with React. But then again, I haven't tried Remix yet, so take my advice uh, lightly. Let me just point out some of the things that are really bothering me. And, and a lot of these things are real things that we're encountering while we're building out real applications, okay? So I'm building out this side project here and we have a page called gallery where when you click on these hearts, it'll basically kick off some server actions to, you know, favorite these images. Now the issue is that with server actions, they do not run in parallel or concurrently, whatever the term is you guys want to nitpick on. When you click on three hearts, it has to wait for all three of these to finish before this page even refreshes. Okay, so inside the server action, there's like a revalidate path, but it waits for all these things to finish before it even revalidates. That's kind of annoying. I would kind of hope that every single request would revalidate after it finishes. And that one might be my fault. You might be like, well, why are you using server actions for something so basic that is really a client side interactive thing? I'll take the L on that one if that's the real case, but I, I wish that I could use server actions and have them just run in parallel against like the same action. So another thing that bothers me is when I go to my favorites, that is going to load the page and it's going to cache that in your client side app router cache. Okay. So when I go back to gallery and I were to unfavorite some of these things, so for example, like this dog, unfortunately, if the user navigates manually back to favorites, these images, unless I wait for 30 full seconds, these images will exist on the favorites page. Notice that the dog is still there. The hat's still there. So this is something that really bothers me about the app router is that like they've went overboard with caching everything and they provide no escape hatch for like specifying when a page should not be cached in the client side router. We encounter this exact same bug with code racer. After you finish practicing a race, you go to your scoreboard. And then if you click back and go back to the race page again, it shows you the exact same snippet. Although in our react server component, we tell it to randomly pick one from the database because of the client side cache, it's showing you the old snippet you just did. Unfortunately, the workaround I end up doing is I have this force refresh component that I put on pages that I want to always be fresh. If you look at this component, all it does is on a mount, it calls router.refresh and that's it. So now you'll see if I were to go ahead and let me unfavorite some of these so we have less stuff to kind of worry about. Go back to the gallery. I'm going to go ahead and click favorite the hat and the pizza. Okay. So notice that when I click favorites, it's going to show the old images for just like half a second. And then it's going to tell react or it's going to tell next to refresh and you'll see those pizzas pop up. Okay. So that's all because of this force refresh component that I've been adding to certain pages, because I've noticed that when you navigate around with the client side router, it just, you just see cache stale data. That alone is probably the biggest pain point to the app router that I've seen. And it's, it drives me insane. It's like, you're trading off performance for awful UX, and I'm just not a fan of it. All right, so the third thing I want to point out, which also ends up being related to caching issues, is that in this Code Racer project, we had a page, and the revalidate time was set to 24 hours. And when you have that deployed to Vercel, again, this might be a Vercel issue and not a Next.js app router issue, but at this point, I don't know. I can't tell. I haven't taken the time to deploy this anywhere else to verify it. But when you have this set to 24 hours, what this page is doing, if I just show you, um, if I go to random here, it fetches some random data inside the React server component from an API. Okay, this is what it does. It does a fetch request to the API slash random, and then that should get cached for 24 hours in this fetch request, and it gets displayed. Now let's look at the API random endpoint. What does that do? Again, this is also a dynamic endpoint that every time you hit it, it gives you back dynamic data. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to go ahead and go API slash random. And you'll notice every time I refresh, you actually get back new data. But this page, for whatever reason, when you set the revalidate time to 24 hours, this never changes. This is stuck. This, this code is deployed to Vercel and they have their own like caching mechanism for various things. But I want to show you, there's a tweet that happened July 28th. So that's about like five days ago or six days ago. It's 0.9938 for reference. I put this here so I can come back later and check. Has this thing ever updated? 
It hasn't. It's stuck there. So this is another loss for, I don't know, Next or Vercel. It's like they decided to go overboard on caching everything. And it's just, it's very frustrating to the developer. And it's probably going to be very painful when your users start reporting bugs into your system because they've done things and they're seeing old stale data. And at first I thought this was a me problem because like um, Lee, Rob reached out to me and was like, hey, did you know that Vercel caches stuff? And I thought it was a me problem. And then I like have tried so many different things to like convince myself that it is me that at this point, I don't think it's me. It's like <laughs> this stuff should not have been stuck here for five days. It should have changed at least once in the past five days. But let's get off of that topic because that's not even like next specific, although it could be. Another thing that's kind of annoying about React Server Components and this like use client thing is that when you first use React, you start realizing how easy it is to refactor code. You can basically take whatever compo component or code you want, you move it out to its own function, and you can use it wherever you want. That actually takes a step backwards with React Server Components because now you can't just put components wherever you want. Certain components will not work unless you have like the use client um, directive at the top of the file. So an example is I pulled in a third party library and the library warns you that you can't use this in a React Server component, you have to use it in a use client. So what you end up doing is you end up taking these third party libraries and you basically wrap them in your own use client component just so that stuff will not break. And that's also a big step back. I wish there was a better way to do this. For example, like if there's a way to say as client and like, like if there's a way to say like as client and like next slash react would know that this is a, a client component, or if there's a way to say like client, boom, put a Boolean on the thing and like next will know and react will know that this is actually a client component. And then you don't have to do all this hassle of like adding use client to the top of your pages. I think I'd be a little bit more happy with that. Now that I think about it, an as client higher order component might actually be an interesting way to like resolve this. You could have this be like a pass through that, I don't know, I haven't really thought about it, but it's just one of those things where it's like, you kind of do it and you're like, okay, why do we have to do all this extra stuff just to move code around? It seems kind of painful. And then the last thing I want to point out, this one's also probably a me problem. So let me just show you, I'm going to go to my favorites and I'm going to throw an error. I'm going to say throw new error, um, GG. Okay. This one, when you go to the favorites page, you'll get the error and that makes sense. But the issue is that when you close out and you click back, it still shows a white page. Um, that's kind of bad UX. And you could be like, well, it's because you didn't add an error TSX file, right? So the solution is you have to come in here and say error TSX, paste in an error file so that when errors happen, Next can actually like handle them, right? That's the solution. But out of the box, when I use a framework, I wouldn't expect like an error to basically critically break the entire application. Um, and not allow the back button to ever work again on the browser. That's just kind of weird to me. But again, that's probably a user issue, um, not a, a framework issue. And maybe it's a both. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of point out some of the things that are kind of driving me insane about using the app router. Again, I want to say that I like using Next.js, which is why I use it in all my videos. I think it's a great way to build full stack applications. I think server actions is also a great way to achieve a lot more with less code. I just think there's a couple of rough edges I need to get smoothed out and I can't wait till those get smoothed out because right now there's just some things that are just bothering me. Oh, well, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out or talk about web development. Like always, have a good day and happy coding.